iconic Toronto condo project placed into receivership due to $1.6 billion of unpaid debt. That's the hottest condo news in town right now. Ever since the news came out, I received so many messages from my YouTube fans, my clients, fellow agents, and developers. There were so many rumors, confusions, and worries. So I'm going to break things down for you, and by the end of this video, you will fully understand what happened, what's going on, and what to expect next. This video will be packed with knowledge and you will find valuable information even though you have no interest in this particular project. So make sure you stay till the very end to grab all the values. Number one, the story. Young and Bloor is arguably the most iconic intersection in downtown Toronto on the southeast corner. I'm sure you recognize the one blur that I've shown a few times in my videos. It was completed in early 2017. That's one blur east. On the other side, at the southwest corner, we have one blur west. The project is called The One, the spotlight of our discussion today. The story goes back to October 2014 when developer Sam Mizrahi bought the land for $300 million. I'm not sure if you remember, but at the time, we have the menswear clothing store Stolleries standing there for 114 years. The store was quickly demolished in 2015 before the city could impose a heritage status on the building. Of course, this action was very controversial but Ms. Rahi did have the full legal rights to do it. He got the demolition permit. After the demolition, the land was just sitting there for more than two and a half years. On October 16, 2017, the one was announced to Toronto in a huge broker event. I did not attend. Before I share the reasons why, if you like this kind of story sharing, Give me a like, subscribe, and hit the bell so I know I should share more. The tallest building in Canada with an iconic architecture standing right at Young and Bloor. The estimated building cost was over $1 billion with such a high profile project and a hot real estate market in 2017. It is not hard to imagine that the one would draw crazy demand. Indeed, I had 17 clients who wanted to invest in the one. It was the hottest project back then and everyone wanted to own a piece of it. I actually spent a lot of time, a lot of time and effort to talk them out of the deal. The number one reason is the number one reason I always tell you about the developer. Ms. Rahi Developments. At the time, I had never heard about this developer, so I looked up their portfolio. They had only built a couple boutique-sized condo in Yorkville. That's why the Globe and Mail described them as an upstart developer. To me, it was too ambitious of a jump to go from a couple boutique condos to the tallest building in Canada. The second reason is money. Who is going to fund this billion dollars project? My friends at the major banks were telling me that the project had trouble getting funding from the big five banks because the risks were too high. That was unofficial information, but it seemed to align with what Ms. Rahi told the public. He said he had an unnamed Chinese lender. The third reason was the complexity of the building. It has this hybrid exoskeleton structure that makes this building six times stronger than a typical tower built and to make it an iconic landmark of Toronto, it will only have 416 units to match with the area code of Toronto. The units will be serviced by eight next generation machine learning elevators that can travel 85 stories in 30 seconds. The rooftop terrace 
featured a 2,000 square foot infinity pool that will be heated 12 months of the year, 7 days of the week. These are all very amazing features, but I was very concerned about the cost, especially that there are only 416 units to share the cost and the kind of fees going forward. There were definitely enough signal for me to make an effort to tell my client to stay out of this project. So I lost a bunch of deals. But of course, the project was sold very well without me. Construction started shortly after and everything seemed fine. Besides the residential condo component, the one also has the hotel and retail component. What's better than having Apple's flagship Toronto store on the ground floor? It was a huge thing. The lease agreement between Apple and Mistrahi had a delivery date of October 31st, 2021. Obviously, it didn't happen. Apple is now suing Mistrahi for $6.9 million in delay damages and a termination of the lease. Besides the Apple lawsuit, Mistrahi and Coco, who each own 50% of the one, are also in this build and locked in a lawsuit as well. With all that background story, let's get into the main discussion about what's happening to the residential condo. The original tentative occupancy date was at the end of 2022. As of now, concrete has been poured to the 40th floor. So almost halfway for this 85-story tower. Just about a week ago, on October 19, the market was flooded with news that the one is put into receivership with $1.6 billion of debt. What does it mean? Number two, the receivership. In 2019, the projected cost for the one was approximately $1.4 billion. But based on the progress today, the total costs are now expected to exceed $2 billion. Currently, the one already has $1.6 billion in outstanding debt, with $1.23 billion owed to KEB Hanna Bank, a commercial bank based in South Korea. At the moment, just the interest alone for KEB staff is $166 million annually. Of course, KEB felt that their money would be at risk, so they applied to the Supreme Court for a receivership. They wanted the courts to appoint someone, the receiver, to manage the project and oversee its development. The Supreme Court approved the request and appointed Alvarez and Massal, which is a managing consulting company, to be the receiver. Ms. Rahi Development is going to remain as the developer and general contractor to complete the development. And Mr. Misrahi continues to maintain his equity position in the project. With this arrangement, KEB, the Korean bank, has agreed to provide another $315 million to fund the project. So the intention is still to complete the project with a new projected completion date of March 2025. Number three, the purchasers. What does this all mean for you if you purchase a unit at the one? There are 416 units in this condo. 346 units have been sold. So around 80% sold. There are 70 unsold units and they are all above the 50th floor. If you are one of the 346 purchasers, you should have received a letter from the receiver on October 20th. It says that the project has faced challenges from COVID, so on and so forth. Here's what this means for you. We have covered the first two points. Construction will continue an additional $315 million funding. The third point, the receiver has not had an opportunity to review any of the existing condominium sales agreement entered into to date. The receiver will review such agreements in conjunction with a review of the fair market value of the applicable unit. 
to determine what, if any, steps will be taken with respect to these agreements. So, what are the possible outcomes after the review? Outcome number one, no change. 346 units have already been sold with gross proceeds of $675 million and 70 more units have yet to be sold. If the receiver believes that $675 million plus the projected price of the unsold units would be enough to pay off all the debt at the project completion, then no change would be needed. The existing agreements would just be kept as is. Personally, I think this outcome is very unlikely given the current outstanding debt is already $1.6 billion. Outcome number two, cancel all the agreements. If the receiver cannot work out the math, then they may want to cancel all the existing agreements and try to resell all the units at a much higher price. But of course, that would be extremely challenging to do so right now because with this current market sentiment and all the negative news surrounding this project, it is very hard to be done. Outcome number three, propose a new price. The receiver may propose a new price to the existing purchasers. For example, add an extra 200, 300, 400, $500,000 to continue with the agreement. In this case, you are not obligated to agree to the new price and you may choose to cancel the agreement. I think this would be the most likely outcome because some purchaser will decide to stay if they believe that the other units will be resold at a much higher price. And of course, some purchasers will cancel and those units will be resold at market price. This way, they don't need to restart sales from scratch and they will have enough unsold units to make up for the math. It will be up to the receiver to decide which outcome they want to see. But as a purchaser, can you initiate a cancellation of the agreement? No, you can't. You can only terminate the agreement if the project is not completed by January 2028. That's the termination date set in the existing agreements. Now, Let's get to the fourth point in the receiver's letter. By the way, if you like the content of this video so far, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell because I will keep you posted on how this matter unfolds. The last point is about deposits. Tarion only protects the first $20,000 of the purchaser's deposit. The rest is protected by a deposit insurance from Aviva Insurance. So don't worry. If your agreement is cancelled by the receiver for whatever reason, you will be getting your full deposit back. For now, there's nothing you can do. You have to wait till you hear from the receiver again. Number four, implications for other investors. What's happening at the one is definitely big news for the market. If you have purchased a pre-construction unit in other projects, should you be worried? With the current high interest rate environment, it is not hard to foresee that some projects will run over budget. Not at what I want to see, but I do expect more project cancellations coming along the way. But if you purchase your unit from a reputable developer, you don't need to worry. The big developers got the negotiation power to lock in rates with the trades so they can control their budget much better and they have a strong financial position. So even if they don't make much money on a particular project, they are still fine. The most important thing is they understand reputation is priceless and they will do all they can to complete the project. In fact, the big developers are especially concerned about this news. It may damage purchaser confidence because not everyone has the knowledge to differentiate among different developers. So if you purchase your unit with me, don't worry, it is guaranteed to be a reputable developer.